is just showing up. You show up, okay, that's a really big step. The courage and willingness to take risks. I mean, that's the epitome of an entrepreneur. That's the definition of an entrepreneur. Taking risks, not being afraid to try something new. To lose a little money, make a little bit of money, reinvest in yourself, as you're going to hear from a lot of the entrepreneurs. Keeping a positive attitude, even during the worst days, trying to keep that positive attitude is very important. Because your employees, your vendors, the people that you're going to want to work with want to see somebody as their leader. And if the leader is having a bad day or down, you know, generally it's going to bring the company down as well. So it's important to keep positive and, a, and to have a positive attitude. Strength of character and fortitude. And character is an important thing. It's your word. It's your trust. Your integrity. Your integrity when you say you're going to be there or do something, or show up, or deliver your homework sometime. Things like that. The integrity, it shows. It shows your employers, your employees, your people that you do business with, you know, that your integrity is really what you have. Because they're doing business with you, not your company. Your company just happens to be there, but it's really about doing business with you. So make sure, even if you're tempted, take a shortcut, well, if you think that you're not going to get caught, you get caught. You get caught eventually. Um, the secret to success, you all want it? Work really hard. That's the secret. Get to work really early and leave really late. There are no shortcuts. There is no easy way to make money. Um, I would tell you that you know, one, of the, you know, one of the main reasons I started my business is because I remember when I worked for companies, I always had to wear a tie. Okay. And I hate wearing a tie. I hate it. And in the last 10 years, I have never worn a tie. So sometimes people say to me, you know, you're nuts. You don't want to wear a tie. That's a reason to start your own business. I would tell you that, you know, every entrepreneur has a little bit that's off in their head. You have a little bit that's off. You have a little bit that's different. It was something, you know, I knew that I wanted to be different. And I wanted to build my brand. And I wanted to do things my way. Um, and I really believe in the concept of, you know, doing it your way. And you look at somebody like Phil Knight, who I admire a lot. Or you look at you know the great Jay Z from Brooklyn, or plenty of others, and they're doing it their way. They're people that you know do things a little bit different. I think it's very important if you want to be successful in life that you know your brand. And you're not going to become you know billionaires overnight, and you're not going to become uber successful overnight. It takes time and it's a process, and you got to learn every step of the way. So I would tell you that you should be authentic to yourself. You should know who you are for yourself. And as you get older, I'll tell you that one of the things that you'll learn is how to be comfortable in your own skin, which is very important. This was the first show that I was actually a named producer, you know, uh, which gets you on the poster and it gets your name on Playbill, which is a very cool thing, I have to admit, you know, I, don't, I, I, I was much more taken with it than I thought. When, when people like Sevi just told me, uh, her sister or her friend, her mother went to see Cinderella and they brought home the Playbill and she said, oh my God, here's my professor in the Playbill. So it's a pretty, pretty cool thing. So in total, a guy who was not in Broadway three years ago now is in 16 productions. It could just add up really very, very quickly. Probably the most important asset to have is what you mentioned, a positive attitude and an enthusiastic, optimistic viewpoint that you can do pretty much anything that you want. And you guys hear that a lot, I guess. You know, when you're out in college, you're going to hear it in school, you're going to hear it from your parents. But the reality is it's really true. The limitations that you put on yourself are the limitations you're going to have in this life. Once you take those limitations away, you'll find that opportunities open up all the time. And once you're in the game, more opportunities open up. It's the people that are standing on the sidelines and not in the game that don't wind up getting the opportunities. You must be willing to execute. Your life cannot be about how do you get the most money for doing the least amount of work. Let me repeat that. Your life can't be about how do I make the most money with doing the least amount of work. That may come later on after you've succeeded. But in the beginning, you need to be willing to put the work, the time, and the effort. You need to be willing to execute. People around you have to look at you as someone that can execute. Can I give you a job? Can I give you a project? Can I give you a function? And you're going to execute that to the end? Are you going to go A to Z? Or are you going to go A to like C? Right, 100% of the world has an idea. 100% of the world, everybody has an idea. 85% of them have a plan 
on how to execute that idea. Maybe three to five percent of them have the actual ability to execute. And when I say execute, I don't mean just start it. Start it, get punched in the face, drop down to one knee, fail a few times, restart it, fail again, start it again, and keep going until you get to that point. Of course, this is not a, a finance class, but I think it's just important for you to know when you're seeing each day that it's making new records, I'm not sure if it's making you any richer uh, or, it's, or it's helping you in any way at this point, but hopefully in the future uh, it will make a big impact as you're successful entrepreneurs and you want to invest in the stock market. So. You should write this stuff down because I can't put it on the board, so you should write this stuff down. Number one, for the rest of your life, as long as you have a job, you're working for somebody. If you don't think you are, you're missing a lot of stuff about the way the world works because you're going to have customers. And you may not be working for the man, but you're serving homemade candy because somebody buying it, right? Or if you're going to make natural cosmetics or somebody buying it, so you're always working for somebody. Number two, you want to control your own destiny and that sort of stuff. But guess what? You're going to have to have people on your team. You cannot do this alone. You're going to have to create a team and a culture around yourself. And one of the key things you're going to have to do is you're going to have to dial down your ego and subordinate yourself to the greater good of that team. See that? So guess what? You do that right, not one of those people is going to be working for you. You're going to be working for them. You see that? Because the best leaders, they put themselves in a servant position to serve the people that they're working with to get to the goal, the best leaders. Because entrepreneurship and everything in your life is gonna be based upon relationships. You're gonna to have to get people to do things for you, the people that are helping you make the candy, the organic cosmetics, the fashion. You're gonna to have to interrelate with those people. You're gonna to have to influence them to help you create whatever your goal is. You wanna know the worst word? On a planet, worse than the F bomb? It's the word ought. Boy, you really should write this down. O U G H T. You see that word ought? That word ought is going to destroy your life if you don't adjust yourself. Your parents ought to get along. Did you not know that? And you guys in the room, you ought to all get along with each other. You ought to like him. You should teach him. Should is a real bad word. Should is a bad word. Why do should get worked out? That's another bad word. You know, life should be a certain way. I should get into the school I want. I ought to go to the college I want. My parents ought to get along. I, get a, I ought to get along with my brother. My mom ought to get along with her sister. My spouse ought to like me. You got what I'm saying? That word ought is going to destroy your life. The world ought to be a certain way. Huh. It's so unfair. You know? It's so unfair. Get over it, man. Let's stop the whining. Get over it. Engage yourself. Um, I think as every single one of you are going to learn, you're only as good as the people who are around you. I don't and actually, that. truly, I don't ask anybody to do anything at my office that I wouldn't do myself. I can have other people do it, but I want everybody to understand we're all equal and we're all in the same boat together and we all have to swim upstream together because if the company does well, every individual does well. And I For me, that's... I was always kind of back and forth between whether I wanted to be in the family business or I wanted to be in marketing or advertising. Um, so I went to Cornell's um, business program with the intention that I may go into the family business, but I also wanted to try some different things before that. So I always. I went off to Albany to college. I went for business, for marketing, and I graduated Albany. And the only jobs I could find were in cold calling for marketing <laughs> and uh, you know sitting in an office all day for 10 hours making calls, not really what I envisioned marketing to be. So I went back to Hasha to get my master's in teaching, teach social studies, and I finished that, I student taught, and I was subbing for a few years, unable to find a teaching job, as you know that's very difficult as well. Yeah, don't go so I tried to think outside the box to try to get back to something related to teaching, you know, to maybe use my marketing skills, whether that be for a youth center or a camp, and I had contacted Marissa 
who I had met once before, and uh, you know, I got lucky.